We are, as a church across the globe in different cities, in San Jose, in South Valley, in Oakland, in San Francisco, in Honolulu, in Austin, in Chicago, in Milan, in Rome, here in Mountain View. Come on, we are all over the place in every city. Targeting that city, but moving as one. And today is a unique Sunday. It's Vision Sunday. It is my favourite my favorite Sunday of the year, favourite weekend of the year. We had an incredible gala on Friday night where we exposed to the Kingdom Builders of Vive Church a preview of the vision. And there was such an atmosphere of God's presence in this place that it was palpable, it was tangible. And I get the sense that that atmosphere has flowed into this morning. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of things. We're going to be sharing the vision. We're going to talk in numbers. We're going to give you an opportunity to partner with the vision. We're going to be presenting the vision. We're going to be celebrating the vision, but we're actually going to be presenting you with an opportunity to respond to the vision as a faith-filled community. And I'm truly excited. I'm truly expectant for the growth that we are about to see as we see the body of believers mobilized and we see revival really take hold in each of our cities. Talking to the campus pastors from, from all over the place, we just get this deep sense that God has been setting things up for a, a wave of revival. And I don't say that just to inspire an amen, but to prepare you prophetically for what's about to come. I want you to be ready because I want you to be used by God to usher in the revival. I don't want you just to be a silent witness. I don't want you to be standing in the crowd witnessing it happening. I want you to be on the field engaging in the work of the Holy Spirit, being a conduit for God to use and flow His power through. So I'm truly excited for what we're going to come around today. But to prepare ourselves, I want to come around to Scripture. Can we put up Ephesians chapter 3? If you have a Bible, feel free to open it up. This is a powerful chapter in the life of Vive Church. Every single year we have preached from this chapter in some facet. The church was founded on this chapter in Ephesians 3, chapter 14 to 21. But I want to go a little earlier. I want to go to verse 9. This is actually going to be a series scripture that we're going to be kicking off today as well. It says this in verse 9, I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. And God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authority in the heavenly realms and the heavenly places. This was His eternal plan, which He carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let me repeat verse 10 again for you. God's purpose in all of this was to use the church. Today, I want to not only share the vision, But as I mentioned, begin a series we're calling Only the Church. Only the Church. Are you ready to receive Vision Vive Church? Come on, I'm talking to Chicago, Austin, San Francisco, Oaktown, San Jose, South Valley. Come on, are you ready to receive the vision today? I feel like you are. I feel like you're leaning in and ready to find out what's next. What's next for Vive Church? Well, as you prepare your hearts, Find 32 people around you. Give them a fist bump or a high five or a forehead bump, whatever feels comfortable and appropriate to how well you know them. If you don't know them, just give them a wave. But go ahead and take your seat in every single Vive Church campus. So I've got a a question for you today, church. I want you to think about it. If you were going to introduce yourself what would you say? Like if you had one attribute to pick out, if you had one thing about you that you felt in totality summarized you and you were tasked with introducing yourself, what's the one attribute that you would want people to know? What's that one thing? That's a lot of pressure. To summarize your life in one word, to introduce yourself, And uh, to present yourself with just using one word. I've been introduced in many settings before and it's always fascinating to me how people 
portray me. I was introduced one time, I was speaking at a high school and the chapel, a high school chapel, and, and the chaplain, I guess that's who he was, introduced me as hilarious. Not even funny, went straight to hilarious. He literally said, guys, you're in for a treat today. This guy is hilarious. Now, now I, I, I'm all for setting expectation. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm all for in the right setting, building an expectation that becomes the platform upon which you minister. That doesn't work in a high school. Because in a high school, whatever you say, they're gonna be critical. Well, we'll tell you about that. That's, that's what they're saying. We'll be the judge of that. And so they introduced me as hilarious. I instantly was like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? I planned on like, it, like ministering deeply into hurt needs and now I've got to be hilarious. The other week I was in a smaller setting of, of, of pastors. Uh, it was this meeting that I was in and uh, I, I happened to be introduced, not so many introduced, but they were referring to Vive and they, they said that Vive was a church built purely on vision. It's a church built purely on vision. Now, I understand that in most instances, that could actually be a compliment. But something about it didn't actually quite sit right. Wow. Like, like it was a nice thing to say. And in many ways, I did agree because over the last decade of Vive Church, we have definitely built every single year on vision. We've been very clear that we have a bold, audacious vision at Vive Church that we come around annually and, and we partner with and we believe in and we present it. And so I couldn't necessarily argue with it, but at the same time, it wasn't completely correct. You see, I would argue that while we have had bold vision, more accurately as a church, we've been built on incredible sacrifice. If I was to present Vive Church to you, I would present a church that's built on sacrifice. I would present a people who know how to sacrifice. I would present that there is in our culture at the bedrock of our DNA is sacrifice. Everything started in sacrifice and everything continues in sacrifice. It's sacrifice that helps us extend the mission and the vision. It's by sacrifice that this thing was birthed. This wasn't from, this, this whole thing that you're a part of in every location around the world wasn't just a great idea. It was actually a thought and an inspiration and a calling from God that required a response for it to even begin. At every level, the, the notion of God and what God wants to do for the church always has to be met with a sacrifice. In fact, the level of what God wants to do has to be matched with the level of sacrifice. I'm not just talking about the church right now. I'm also talking in your calling in your world. What you're expecting God to do in and through your life or your marriage or your family, if you believe that what God is calling to you is grand, be ready for God to call a lot of you. <laughs> uh, let, let me reframe it. If you feel like God has a lot for you, expect God to lot, ask a lot from you. If you've resigned to the fact that God doesn't have much for me, I'm not gonna do much in this life, I'm happy just to survive, then guess what? You have a perfect plan to skate through life, never participating in sacrifice, never actually stepping up to that risky moment where I have to give something of my life. But if you dare to believe that if you were sitting on your own in silence, in a wilderness moment, just you isolated with God and you had the deep sense within you that it's not a haughty, proud thought or moment, but you just had a conviction that I feel like my life is meant for something. I feel like there is something on my life. I can't quite articulate it yet, but I just get the sense that I wanna to present to you what the pathway to realising that is, it's sacrifice. A sacrifice. It doesn't happen on its own. It's got to be paid with sacrifice. And in fact, generosity, true generosity, real generosity can only be measured on a level of sacrifice. And today you'll not only hear the vision and the direction that we are moving in as a global church for 2023, but you'll, you'll be tasked again. Tasked again as the church, as the believers, as those called of God to partner again with the purpose of God. For, for many of you, this has been going on for a decade now, some longer. For some of you, you're brand new to the house of God. 
And this is your first opportunity to partner. But for many of us, we're going to be tasked yet again. Yet again. Yet again, we get the opportunity to sacrifice and to move the kingdom of God forward. But before I share the vision elements with you, I want to set us up with this passage I just read in Ephesians. Because what you're going to find here in Ephesians 3 is a confident Paul. A man so confident of his calling that he presents it to the church with absolute clarity and conviction. There's no wavering in what he presents. He makes it very, very bold and very, very clear. It was a calling essentially to unveil and reveal the plan of God that had been hidden up until this moment. And it was a two-part plan. The first part was to reveal that because of what Christ had done, we talked about glory to the land, because of His sacrifice for us, He had now opened up a brand new understanding in a brand new way. He had unlocked for all of us who had been considered Gentiles to now be, have access to be adopted into the family of God. To fully understand this, you need an Old Testament context. You see, in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, we saw that the people of God was the Jewish nation. The Israelite nation that God formed through Abraham, desiring to carve out of all the people on the land, His very own people who would be His very own possession. And the reason God wanted His very own people and His very own possession, because He wanted to show what it would look like to be the people of God. Have His own people through which He could pour out His power, His provision and His protection. That upon them, all the other nations of the world would look at their God and say, their God is good. How could we have a God like their God? Even though the people of God were disobedient time and time again, what it showed was God's unfailing love toward the people that He chose. It wasn't their doing, it wasn't their qualifications, but because of the goodness of God and His mysterious selection criteria that He chose them to pour out His love. It was limited to a people. But because of what Christ had done, He opened up a new and life-giving way into God's presence, allowing even those that weren't born of the Israelite nation to become part of the descendants of heaven and the recipients of God's love, power, and brought into the family of God. Paul says, my job, as my task, to make you aware of this fact. Now we all get to be the people of God. The second part we see of his revelation and his calling was to understand that God had a purpose, which was to use the church. (laughs) Verse 10, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. You see, God's plan for mankind is us. It's a church. It's you and I. The ecclesia, the called out ones, those chosen by God to step out of darkness into light, called to His purpose to partner with Him in His eternal plan on the earth. Did you know that the church is the only eternal entity on the earth today? Everything will fade away except the church. The church will remain. (laughs) This is what you're a part of and this is God's plan that He would use a fractured and broken people with all kinds of different backgrounds, but united in sacrifice, that united in the purpose of God, united in salvation, that we would bring about the eternal mandate and message of Jesus together. It's been His plan from the beginning to use the church as a revealer of His manifold wisdom, and the vehicle through which He channels His power, outworks His plan. This is the church. The church is a body of believers called by God to use their own lives as a revealer of resurrection power. The church is a first-hand witness to His wondrous works who can testify of His greatness. The church being those called in their lifetime to continue the work of extending the kingdom. The church, which is simply a group of humans held together by the Holy Spirit, tangibly representing the very body of Christ. You see, only the church can offer the hope that is found in Jesus. Only the church can fulfil God's plan on earth. Only the church moving as one can win. Only the church can awaken people to the reality of Jesus and bring heaven to earth. Only the church. Do you know only has degrees to it? In fact, I don't know if you've been seeing our graphic, only has a degree. You could look at only from a limited perspective. 
I only make so much, Pastor. I'm, where's Vox Jen? I only started a first job. I'm only young. I'm only single. It's only me and my kid, single parents. We can use only as the disqualifier. And you can look at life through the only lens from the negative perspective. But I love the English language because only has two sides to it. Then instead of a disqualifier, what if it was a qualifier? What if there were degrees to this thing? Like, like I don't need everything. God only needs my yes. <laughs> like we've only been going a minute and look what, look what God has already done. Like what, if, what if only had degrees to it? Then I don't think that God determines who He's going to use by your ca- capability and your capacity. I actually feel that just maybe God looks like, can you just move in obedience? What if that's, what, if that's what God's only looking for? It's the people who are willing to obey. It's a sacrifice. You are busy disqualifying yourself, but God's not using those qualifications as a candidate for His power and His blessing. He's looking for those who would only say yes. Yes. Only has degrees to it. There's levels to this. There's a manifold wisdom of God. That is what God's plan is, is to use the church to reveal His manifold, the layered wisdom of God, that there are degrees to the wisdom of God. That even in the fact that He uses sometimes some people who we would disqualify throughout the Word of God, throughout the Bible, even today, is a greater dimension of His glory. We see it in the story of Gideon. Crazy situation where God calls Gideon to muster an army against the enemy and he assembles quite an impressive army, if you know the story. In fact, it looked like, hey, maybe the people of God could win this. But then God, through a series of weird and abnormal events, has Gideon whittle the army down to a mere 300 men. Makes no sense militarily in a tactic. But God wasn't trying to make sense militarily because He wasn't about to give glory to the army. He wanted to give glory back to God. So He says, let me, let me make the odds stacked against you so they can say only their God could do this. What if, what if only is a qualifier? Now, while we've come a long way over the last decade, I can assure you we've only just begun. Amen. I don't say that to intimidate you or diminish the mountains that we have conquered as a church. We've definitely climbed some hills, but to inspire you around the fact that God has way more in store. And as you know, we are a global church, 10 locations in different settings, in different cities, but moving as one. And this year, I want to present a vision that both affects each location locally and specifically and a vision that we're all going to come around globally. Now, when I say globally, let me make sure you know what that means. That does not mean separate from a location. That just means every location. Globally means all of us together. And firstly, let's approach the vision from a local level. I'm talking about, firstly, the first, the, the, what I would say is the newest four campuses, Vive Honolulu, Vive South Valley, Vive Austin, and Vive Chicago. These campuses, I'm so proud of them because I'm excited for what God is doing in each location. Each of these locations literally started at the beginning of the pandemic. And really, from conception, they have had to overcome all kinds of obstacles as new communities. And yet in the midst of all the obstacles that they have had to overcome, not just as communities, as leaders and campus pastors that are represented on this screen here, Pastors Gabe and Rita in Austin, Pastor Adam and Amy in Chicago, Pastors Mark and Joy in Honolulu, and Pastors Vlad and Jana in South Valley. It's been impressive to see the way God has been growing them, their leadership, their influence, and as the church is moving forward, against all odds, the church is seeing lives transformed. 
testimonies and miracles and stories. And we invested heavily to get these campuses going. And we didn't see this as just an injection at the beginning and saying, good luck. No, we're a family. We're going to double down on our investment in these locations because we're committed to these cities. We're committed to seeing lives transformed in each of these cities. And after chatting with these couples, we've come to the idea of where we need to make some direct injection of capital into specific areas that I'm going to show you. So, for instance, we want to invest in enhancing the worship experiences in these locations. This means hiring staff, upgrading venues, investing into youth and royal kids, the ministries of the church. At the same time, we want to make some greater investments into their community engagement. We want the world and these cities to know that Vive Church is there with the hope of the world. We can do that with some strategic outreach and marketing tools. We believe that each of these campuses is positioned to have an incredible impact in their city in 2023. So we want to make sure we make a significant investment into that. Now, it's not just these four newest locations, but with our more, what I would say, established locations of Vive San Francisco and Vive Oakland. Here we've got God moving in ways that is blowing my mind. With Pastors Bobby and Abby and Pastor Brittany up in San Francisco, I'm telling you, the, the way God is working and the miracle stories, like crazy miracles of healings, cancer being broken off people's lives and people having children that could never have children before, diagnosed that they couldn't have children, but because of the house of God, seeing God move powerfully. And so we're also seeing into the future and projecting very soon both these locations are going to see significant growth in numbers. And we want to be ready. We want to be ready. So in addition to what I mentioned with the other locations, in San Francisco and Oakland, we're going to be establishing what is called our Project Vive Fund. For those who don't know, this is our, this is our future fund for building purchases. And it was the Project Vive Fund that we had established here in Mountain View over years that allowed us to get into this space. That and miracles. But that's how God works. He works through stewardship and the miraculous. But we believe as we begin to steward our funds for these locations that right at the right time as we see a momentum, they'll be able to have real estate in the landscape of their city. We're also going to double down on outreach and investment. Can I also talk about Vive San Jose for the sake of time? Vive San Jose is absolutely breaking records. It is, it is crushing it. God is doing something miraculous in Vive San Jose with team and people coming in and growing as the church. Pastor Chase and Rebecca Wiggins are doing what I would call an anointed job. And last year, we, we saw the power of them moving into a permanent lease space. And we stretched to do that as a church. We were able to do a basic fit out, but we feel it's time to prepare the house for revival with a phase two build out. To begin to see the lobby and the cafe and the offices and the Royal Kids Wing kind of come together, not just be basic pop-up walls, but to actually have a place where we can see uh, people grown, ministries developed, lives transformed, having services upon services in the house. In addition to all the other things that we're doing in the other locations by enhancing in community and the worship experience there. Let me talk about Vive Mountain View for a moment. In fact, I want to invite up the campus pastors, Pastor Luke and Michelle, so we can inform you of some specific elements for Mountain View. As they come up on the stage, I want to let you know that we recently uh, met with the mayor of Mountain View. We, we felt that since we have a significant piece of real estate in the city now, that we are positioned strategically to have an influence in the city. We feel that the church should be the prominent place in any city. You don't agree with me, okay. That's fine, that's fine. If you think a tech company should have the prominent place, I think you're in the wrong place. I believe the church should be the prominent place in every single city, a center of culture and creativity, and the move of God. 
And we wanted to inform the mayor of that. And we love our meeting with the mayor. Michelle, let's talk about that meeting. Yeah. Go for it, yeah. Yeah, so we sat with the mayor, Mayor Lucas Ramirez, and he let us know just the top three things that are facing the city of Mountain View. Because we premised our meeting with him, like, Vibe is here, you're welcome. Yep. But then also, what is it that you would like us to solve and, and tackle with you? We're partners with the city. And so he let us know that one of the things is you have probably seen is um, housing insecurity. So just that week that we met with him, they had passed an ordinance that would require those that live in mobile homes into industrial areas. So literally in our doorstep here. The second area is food insecurity. With, with the looming economy and everything, um, it doesn't, homelessness and, and food insecurity doesn't look like what it will look like. People have jobs and everything, but still when they go home, there's not necessarily enough food on the table. And the last thing- Especially was, for children. And especially for children. And the last thing was um, job insecurity. So looking um, and getting skilled up and skills and being able to further themselves. And all of these three categories, especially for women, yes. who tend to be one of the most um, vulnerable populations. That's right. The, the had a specific concern about women who are facing homelessness. Exactly. And as he was talking, at that moment, I was thinking because I had commissioned, we had moved during the pandemic. You might be familiar with this if you've been around. We, we had to rent an outdoor warehouse on San Antonio where we would set up church outdoors. And since we moved in here, I'd commissioned our CFO, Aaron, to, to sublet that place, being good stewards of, of everything that we have. But as I was thinking, I, I thought, I better text Aaron to stop the deal. Because while we can't necessarily solve the homeless issue for the city of San Jose, I, I told the mayor, I think we can solve the second two. Because what he needed was he needed a place to store food donations. He literally said, we need warehouse space to store food that is donated, to be distributed. And I thought, we have a warehouse. At the same time, we don't just have a warehouse, we have a parking lot on a main road. We could not just store, we could distribute. So I told Aaron, don't do the deal. What if we were to keep the hanger as a hope hanger? What if we, as the church, could serve our community by turning our warehouse into a hope hanger? A place of food storage where we could receive donations from the businesses and the supermarkets and we could also have a place where we distribute the food not only that, his third concern was women at risk. A lot of these women who are homeless get to have housing at night but have to leave during the day. That's when they're most vulnerable and most at risk. What if we had a refuge cafe? A place where they could get on the internet and apply for jobs or maybe they could be trained as a barista to gain skills and get employment. This is when the church begins to solve the issues of the city that we're in. This is the power of having square footage and the church being positioned, the hope hanger, where we could also house our hope truck when it finally comes, Elon Musk, but, but we're committed to it. So we're about to flip our hanger into the hope hanger, where you can be mobilised as the church to give of your time, to serve the hurting in our community, to the least of these. Not for our name, but for the name of Jesus for the glory of Jesus Christ. God doesn't waste anything. Yeah. Right. God strategically positions everything that we can be an impact in our city. Not only that, in Mountain View, we've been really focusing obviously on getting this space ready. Yeah. Literally in a couple of months, since August when we moved in, we've been rapidly getting this place ready, but we have such a vision for this house. Our vision for our permanent locations, whether it's in San Jose or the future buildings that we're gonna buy is not just for Sunday. Yes. In fact, Pastor Luke, talk to us about the vision for the house of God. Yeah, for sure. The vision has always been that it's not just for Sunday we have the building, but it's used throughout the week. A place where people are able to come, have community, be able to actually have a conversation with each other. And we always know that we're always one connection away through breakthrough. Yes. 
and especially for our entrepreneurial community, the business and faith yeah. coming together. Yeah. And we have an innovation wing here at uh, the building. Which and you have space in, Adaptic yes, Health. Adaptic Health, my startup, is one of the first paid tenants here. And even as I've had employees, had other folks come here for business meetings, they're just wowed by the story of Vive, inspired. And we know that God, he is the creator. He's the source of all creation and innovation. We really believe that as we come together, we're able to not only inspire, but actually see people move forward in their businesses, be able to see innovation happen here. Exactly. And what Pastor Luke is articulating so well is we've always seen the church as a destination. Yes. Mm. A place that people come to, that work from. That's why we're committing in a phase two development to not only just fit out the cafe and a place where people can come and work, but we also want to introduce to you what we believe is going to be a great evangelism tool, which is called the kingdom of light. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Mm. Pastor Amanda, can you come up here? This is our <laughs> Royal Kids pastor. Now, I need every location to pay attention. Because while this is specifically focused on Mountain View right now, it is gonna be a framework for what we build in every single location. I need you to get the vision. Hello, Pastor Amanda. Hello. How are you? Amazing, how are you? People don't get to hear from you often. Hello. <laughs> now, let's talk about our kingdom of light. Oh, man. Uh, well, there's a very clear mandate on this house to innovate and to pioneer, and that's exactly what we're doing through our Royal Kids Ministry. It's not just the kids' ministry. It's a place for um, them to encounter the presence of God, and that's really what we're flipping on its head. We're not doing just what a kids' ministry might look like, but what it should look like, that they can come in and have a high calling and a vision for their lives. They can be developed in the giftings and callings that God has placed on them, um, and this is really what we're doing through this kingdom of light um, design, that this, there's so many concepts within the kingdom that are unseen, but you can feel it. You yes. can um, experience it. And that's yes. what we're really bringing out of this concept of kingdom of light. Well, I'm so. excited because you've been working so hard with our, uh, our team and the company that we've been contracting with yeah. to come up with a Royal Kids experience that would be an attraction yep. and a destination for yes. people from communities all around the place. Yes. Can we walk them through some of the plans? Let's would you it. like to see some of the plans? So what I got here is this is, if you are unfamiliar with this building, if you just come in here to the auditorium lobby and then you go, that's the kids wing. At the moment, there's several rooms Take down the right hand wing of the yep. church that are committed yeah, yeah. to the different spaces of Royal Kids. Yeah. Walk us through it. This is a little teaser. So obviously we um, begin at the entryway. You guys know that it's so key to capture a kid's attention from the very beginning. So we have our entryway, rooms A, B, C, and D. So it goes anywhere from obviously birth through fifth grade. All right, let's, let's, let's go. Let's look at it. We let's want to go see. at it. All right, so this is the entryway. So you might think, oh, cool LEDs, lights. It's even bigger than that. This is actually a reactionary LED panel. So as kids and families interact with it, it's moving, it's changing. You can change the colors to match with the series. It can be used all throughout the week to say, hey, what is happening in Royal Kids? What's happening in the life of our church? Projection mapping on the floor, because that's what we do. We're incredible, um, and it draws all the kids in. Exactly, because yeah. we want them to engage. You can put the yes. series on there, and then this is the first room. Yep. Let's have a look at this. Room number one, this is anywhere from zero to three years of age. Um, and it's just this, the, the heart of our Royal Kids mission is you um, kind of create this awe and wonder. This is a life that we have with God. So kids are experiencing a relationship with God for the first time as they step in, as they crawl into the space. They crawl, as I they like crawl that. crawl into the space. Like, I love you gotta God. crawl by faith, I yep. like that. So everything too, it's very de developmentally um, designed. So even those um, orbs you might see up there, it responds to touch, it makes sound. Um, and you can see all these archways too. Yeah, show them the archways, them can the, we put that yeah. up there real quick? This, this is connected, is, right? Yeah, this is called kinetic lighting. So essentially it responds to how a kid engages with it. So depending on how um, hard they push on it, how high they jump, it's going to send it to the other side of the room, which helps them keep them engaged, have fun. It looks incredible. Um, so this helps them engage in the room. You literally would see this in a science and technology museum, yes. but this yes. is going to be in the church. Yes. Yep. 
Yep. This is the next space. This Talk about that. This is the next space. This is ages four um, to six years of age and something um, in that kingdom of light, the unseen, um, you can see this far wall is actually, it's called a birch wall. But when you come in and when you engage with it, it actually reacts to how the child touches it as well. Um, so it's moving, it's got shapes, you can do different designs on there. Um, and another thing that's really exciting about this space is the cubbies. You might think they're just cubbies, but they're not. It's a chance to bring the yeah, Bible to life. Let's talk about the cubbies. The cubbies can are incredible. Can we go incredible. back here? Yeah, look at those, those cubbies. Those right here. So these actually respond to um, what we're doing, what a child is experiencing. And so if they're reading about Jonah and the whale, the waves will crash into it and they'll be transported into the Bible. They'll know exactly what's happening. The feelings, the emotions, the power, it's gonna come through that space. Um, and similarly to the ceilings as well, that's all video. So it's gonna transport them into a new space too. Well, we're talking about, now, now talk about Kit and Russ there. Okay, Kit this and Russ cool. are incredible friends here at Vibe Church. Um, this is really exciting. So you may have seen on social media, on Instagram, um, it's called Chats with Crush, and it's this turtle where uh, children are talking to him and he's responding in real time, and this is a brand new technology that people are literally begging for, Disney, Pixar. This company wants to work with us. They want to bring it into the house of God. Um, which is like, and I, I think I just want to share the weight of this because it's not just a cool video. Um, this is, these kids look up to these, these Kit and Russ. Um, and when they can see the passion that Kit and Russ have for the Word of God and for these Bible stories, they're making an even deeper connection. Um, so they'll be able to talk to, hey, Kit, what's your favorite Bible story? And in real time, we'll have Kit talking back, hey, I love this story, um, which so just good. brings it to life for them. So good. Yeah, can incredible. we also talk about the lobby while we're at it? Because this looks like just yeah. psychedelic carpet. <laughs> <laughs> but it ain't. It looks like it, but it's not. So um, you guys know the check-in time is so critical for our families, for our children to get that key information. But as our parents are getting checked in, our kids are just lost in actually what's happening on the ground. It's responding to how they move and how they dance. And what's really exciting about this is you can theme it. So if we've got a series with the beach and the waves, it's going to be sand. It's going to be water moving. So it's beginning this series. It's getting them engaged and excited about what they're about to step into. I like that you said the kids, but it'll be the parents on there oh, yeah. doing that as they're checking yeah, 100%. in. Yeah, 100%. Kids. Yeah. All right, now we just recently instill, installed a play structure. We did. But... We're going to play zone in play mind. Play zone. Talk about it. We're going next level. So what's really exciting about this play zone, it's not just for fun. We want people to step into a space and know, I know my kid wants to be in the house of God and not some other play place randomly. McDonald's. So, yeah, <laughs> McDonald's. Um, but we're bringing this to life. And what's really exciting about this, it's not just a place they can play and go on slides. You can um, really cater to all these types of children who have different ways of engagement. So this left side you might see is very tactile. The way they're touching it is creating sounds and movements and lighting and responses on the other side of the room for um, them to talk to their friends about, to make different music and notes. Was honestly like coding. Like we're so Silicon Valley. <laughs> they're doing these different training things. Training them for training up, train up future a child. jobs. That's right. Um, and they're getting exposed to that already here in the house of God and in Royal Kids, which is so exciting. Amazing. But yeah. talk to us about praise and worship and the Word praise of God. Praise and worship. Oh, I'm so proud of our Royal Kids. Um, they're stepping into the power of worship. And so this last room, um, this is ages 7 to 11. The focal point is this stage. We're bringing to life worship. This is where we're training our worship leaders. We're training future preachers. This is where they're going to really step into the call of God that's already on their life, and they get to be developed. So even a cool thing about this is the floor. It's projection mapping. So it doesn't just look cool. It's going to help kids know, hey, where do I engage myself? Where do I need to focus? It's going to move to where they need to be at a certain time, which is encouraging the, the correct focus for them. Um, and the walls, too. Don't worry. It's not a strange wallpaper, you might be thinking. Um, it's actually even more projection mapping to bring them into the theming of the series, similarly to how we're doing in the hallways, actually. Talk about the hallways real yeah, quick. Yeah. Um, we never stop. Rogue has taken over the wing. So uh, we are um, um, kind of setting the whole experience all the way through the hallways with even more projection mapping to start off the series and theming and everything. So good. So what you need to know yeah. about this is yeah. so often people treat uh, kids' ministry as a care service or a babysitting service while you're having church. Here at Vive, we believe they're having church and I'm babysitting you while they get prepared for the calling of God. Amen. That's the yeah. truth. Amazing. We're so excited for that. Yeah. Amanda, anything else you want to say? 
I think it's just an honor that we get to do this. It's just so you guys know that the magnitude of this company we're building with, they build Nintendo Land in Japan, they're building all these different spaces, but they want this to be a focal point. They want to send people here to have dreams and visions unlocked for design and creativity. And so this is the hub. This is the new hub for it. Um, so Honestly, excited. she's being really humble, but their team of creatives have been so inspired by Amanda's vision that they are framing this as the new standard for churches as they build out kids' experiences. And uh, this is what we project, not just for here, but for every location as we build That's buildings right. across the right. globe. That's Thank right. you, Amanda. Welcome. Now, that's already a lot. <laughs> I haven't got to the global portion yet. So let me go fast. There are two categories that God has framed for me this year with the global vision. Expand and extend. First, I want to look at extend. It's time we get serious about growth here at Vive Church and engaging with our communities at a greater level than ever before. So we're going to launch a new outreach strategy starting next week, a marketing campaign across the globe with a very simple campaign we're calling Any Given Sunday. If you're familiar with American football, you would recognize this statement, which refers to the belief that any given Sunday could be the victory for your team, especially if you're a Cowboys fan. However, we believe that any given Sunday could be your victory in the house of God. A simple invitation statement informing the community that not only we are here permanently, but you're invited any given Sunday. And this just isn't a digital campaign. This is going to be boots on the ground kind of urban guerrilla warfare where we mobilize you as the church, equipping you with invitational pieces and door hangers that we could mobilize thousands of people across our cities with, with not just prayer to pray for the city, but pieces to engage with people that they meet, inviting them to the house of God. Still the greatest way for people to come to the house is personal invitation. And we want the, co the city covered with prayer walking and inviting, as well as engaging with people and mass invitation. Also under the idea of extend, I want to reveal that something God spoke to me about a year ago. We were in a team meeting in Palo Alto at the time. And the Holy Spirit was speaking and He gave me a word as I looked at Rob and Saray Odom, a couple here in our church in Mountain View. And as I looked at them, I got the word missions. So I did what any good pastor does. And I said, well, I guess that's a prophetic word for them. And I prophesied over them, only later to realise that God was speaking over us as the church. That God is calling us to engage with missions. Traditionally, what's called short-term missions. And I don't like that phrasing because it feels like, you know, show and go. So we call it high impact missions here at Vive Church, where we could literally mobilize teams of people to go into regions and make an incredibly uh, powerful impact over a short time and make connections and partnerships. So we've been on a search of where so I could present to you. And for some strange reason, I'm still yet to figure out why, we have a large and continuously growing Brazilian community here at Vive Church. I told you. In fact, little do people know in our second year of operating as a church, we sent a missions team to Sao Paulo, Brazil. They took computers. We wanted to give from the beginning. And so we thought that that's the city that we need to re-engage with to have teams go to Sao Paulo. We also have connections in the Dominican Republic. And so next year in 2023, we're going to mobilize four different teams to these two locations to partner with churches, to bring what we have here, training, technology, finances, to make a significant injection on the mission field with high impact missions. Secondly, the other category God gave me was expand. We're going to do this in three specific ways. We're going to expand through technology, investments into faith-based startups. Being a church found in the Silicon Valley, we have the unique exposure to early stage product development and startups that can strategically and significantly accelerate the building of the church across the globe. And we think it would be so Silicon Valley of us to partner with these startups and these founders to help them accelerate producing products that will not only enhance what we do as a church, but I am believing that by faith that investment would produce a potentially lucrative return for the church. We also feel it's time to deepen our investment, expand our global movement. 
The truth is, we have some pretty powerful worship here at Vive Church. <laughs> worship that is going across the globe, that is seeing incredible effect and influence. We have people from all over the place letting us know about the music that came out of this house that is literally changing their life as it's being played on different playlists and they're encountering it. It's literally moving them. And we really feel from God that this is a strategic avenue for us to double down on, to make a deeper investment in the production of music and worship from Vive Worship to Vox Gen to even Royal Kids. Not only that, as a part of our Vive Global movement, we want to invest in Vive U and our conferences, our ministry and pastor training programs to develop leaders for the future and focus our energy on strengthening this movement that we are a part of and that has happened as we keep and continue planting campuses. Now, for the sake of time, the last element of this year's vision is probably the most anticipated. <laughs> for months now, people have been speculating now what does the question mark at the bottom of the stairs here in Mountain View mean? I do want to inform you that we are going to launch another location in 2023. But where? It has been so fascinating to me to hear your thoughts and guesses on where Vive will be planting next. You're all wrong. <laughs> Our 11th location will be known as Vive London. We are going to be planning a Vive location in 2023 in the UK, in the beautiful city of London. Now, I don't want to just tell you I want to take you. Can we go to London? Vibe Church, welcome to London. We are so excited because we are expanding, as you just heard, into London. And we wanted to bring you on the journey and tell you why London. Honey, tell them. Why not? I why say. not? What a great London, response. That's exactly right. We've been praying for London for, for quite years. some time, yes. for years, actually, you and I have. Yeah, you don't know this, but every location we expand into, it's bathed in prayer for many years. Yep. And it was just this morning while we're here saying how surreal it is that we're finally we here bringing it. this announcement to yep. you, Vive Church. But give them a background as to why God put London on our heart. Yeah, look, honestly, we plant in iconic cities yes. and London is an iconic city. Correct. Um, as Vive Church, we don't just plant anywhere. We go to places where we can have influence and where we can influence the culture. Exactly. And this is a place for that. Exactly. We have Google being built right yep. behind Meta's us. Meta's back there. Yeah, it's a tech hub. It's also a religious hub. There's sure. a lot of history here sure. um, of the church, but we are going to bring revival into that space. There's yes, lots are. of art as well. Correct. It's an exciting city. Now, a lot of people know that we're from Australia. Yes. You can tell by our accents. But many people don't know that my family actually originated in the UK. And, you know, it's been one of those things that's on our heart for many years to say, imagine if we yeah. could plant a church, a Vive Church in London. Every time we had that thought, we thought, no, nah, that's too hard. What I've come to realize is every time I have that thought with the original thought, that's generally where God intersects the thoughts. That's true. And says, I like what you said. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Now, you're not just in London. You're finding us in King's Cross. Yes. Before we tell you why here in this location and where we are, I want to talk about who is going to be leading this mission. And of course, you know pastors Davide and Milena. They are so familiar to Vive Church. This couple are amazing. As you know, pioneered last five years, Vive Church in Italy with Roma, Milano, and now we have selected them for the mission of launching Vive Church in London. Give us some background to your experience with London. Yes, I was actually born here. That's right. People so, don't know that. Yes, I was born <laughs> here. So I grew up here till I was seven, then moved back to Italy. So yes. I know this place is just an amazing uh, city. Correct. And we, we, we love everything here. As Pastor Kier was saying, there's yep. so much culture. Yeah. Culture, art. experience. You know people here. Yes, we yes. do know people. Yep. And so we're just really excited to see what, what's going to happen here. Right. And Mila, yeah. you've lived here. Yeah, I grew up here. I actually have family here, friends. Yep. I went to school here. So it's, it's amazing to to come back here yes. to my place. Why King's Cross? I mean, we talked about it before, uh, you know, it's a cultural place, but let people know why King's Cross. 
Yes, when we came here the first time, we like checked around the city and King's Cross was just like mind blowing. Yeah. We found everything yeah, from stunning. Google yes. to Meta and we saw, wow, this is actually a little Silicon Valley. Right, yeah. actually people talk about it that way. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And there's a lot of people, there's people that live here, yeah. right? So there's not only people, tourists. Correct. Yes. yes. And there's a lot of residents. Yes. It's not just a tech hub, yeah. but people walking around. You're probably going to catch that as you're seeing us film this, that people are walking around everywhere. There's a lot of life activity. And yeah. for us, we're so excited. Even for me, after all the places we looked, this resonated King's Cross. Yes. And it was something to do maybe with the name King's Cross. Our King died on the cross, and this is such a pivotal place to launch the church. So, Vive Church, that's what we're doing. We're not just putting an event on. No. We're not just putting on a worship experience. We're planting a church here, aren't we, babe? Yeah, the church is the hope of the world. It is the place yes. where your life is transformed. Yep. It's where you meet your spouse. It's Correct. where you grow in ministry. Yep. It's where your children and generations grow up. Yep. So we are excited about establishing a church here that is going to transform the city. That's honestly what I'm so excited about. After planting 10 locations now around the world, and getting to know the people in those locations and the families and the kids that are born in and the stories of breakthrough. Yeah, I can already foresee the incredible stories of miracles and lives transformed here in London. Yes. And church, we aren't just sending Pastor David and Milena. Yeah, they already have a team here on the ground. They know people and I'm sure there's gonna be people coming here physically. Yeah. But we're doing this as a church. We're doing this together. Yeah. Whether you're pioneering in prayer partnering financially to make sure this happens. We are doing this as a church because we are planting an extension of Vive Church here permanently in London. So church, let's go. The future of London is Vive Church. Come on. So exciting. In fact, I can now say you can follow the Instagram handle and we're gonna be launching the church with a campaign a hashtag, it all starts at the cross. That's a great place. Your life starts at the cross, amen. In fact, we're already on the ground in a, in a way. Maybe not the ground, we're already in the airwaves of London. You don't know this, we didn't even know this, but we were informed this week that Vive Worship is already playing on the radio in London. We were completely surprised by it. We didn't know how it happened, but uh, a contact that we know there was so excited they heard it several times, they finally recorded it and they recorded a voice message. I thought we could share it with you. Can we play that? To me, bro, it's on the radio. There's a Christian radio station, massive here, called Premier Christian Radio, and it was just playing. But I heard it a few weeks before and I shazammed it. This is cool, it's a nice. And um, it, it had like vibe, I think, worship, or, you know, and I thought, yeah, it's pretty cool. It actually is different, you know, a lot of the stuff that's playing on there. It's, it's not over pop. Um, I like it a lot. I mean, it, it moved me in terms of, yeah, this is a good track. And the Exodus and the, yeah, I, I like it. It's, it's a real cool track. And my genre of music and worship is, is quite unique, but that was unique. It was excellent, mate. Really liked it, different style. It's actually got a European feel to it. I don't know who wrote it, but it's, you know, be good over in Europe, Italy, well, UK. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it's cool. Pastor David and Milena, come on up here. Come on, let's welcome our new campus location pastors of Vive London. Yeah, come on, Stan. This is a big feat that they have ahead of them. And uh, next week, they're actually, these guys are so busy. When you work for me, you get busy. They're going to Brazil next week, to Sao Paulo, to make the connections for our missions. And it's actually your family that has connections in the Dominican Republic. But uh, we're so excited to be commissioning you after launching Rome and Milan, now launching London. Uh, I'm so excited for the success and the experience of your ministry to continue there. I know what you want to say to the church, if you want to say anything. It, this is actually my first vision Sunday in person. Yes, I, it I is. Was, I was actually there thinking about the first one. I was in my bed in, in Verbania. That's right. Looking at you to say about uh, Vive Rome. That's right. And, and that was just, just amazing. And I, I'm just so happy to be here now, five years after, uh, after we started Vive Rome, Vive Milan. And, you know, we've been saying we've only just begun. But I really felt from God, like, if you only just begin. Oh. 
Come on now. I will show you what's going to happen. Preach. So I'm really excited for what's going to happen in, in London. Yes, we're, we're seeing revival in Italy. We're so excited and honored to see it just expand in Europe. So we know that God has something special for London, and I know it needs Vive Church. So we're really excited. Amen, amen. Now they can follow the handle. They can get engaged. If they know anybody in London, yes, yes, feel free sure. to connect them. We yep. know that everybody has works for a company that has an office in London. Yes. So oh, so you want people to that, transfer? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's obviously because okay. we're open. Sure. Hey, the campus pastors are saying no, no, you can't have them. Good shepherds. All right, let's do this. I want you to stretch your hand out. I want this to be a commissioning moment. Every campus right now, stretch your hands out to the screen. We're going to pray over them from the beginning. God, we are commissioning them and anointing them as they extend the house. But not just extend the house, they extend the kingdom of God into London. There is something so unique on Vive Church that they carry the presence of the living God. And I pray, Lord, for favor. We pray for doors to open. We pray for a momentum and an influence. We pray for people finding out about this church and finding home and finding life and finding salvation and finding transformation. So God, would that anointing be upon them. Lord, we pray for divine connections that will be the testimony of how this begun. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Amen. take a seat for just a moment because my question is after hearing all that how will you respond I'm going to hand over to the campuses to facilitate this moment but here in Mountain View how will you respond how we respond determines the impact that we will see. And as I said earlier, it's directly connected to the level of sacrifice we're willing to make. How far we can go with expanding the gospel, how wide we can reach with tools of marketing, how we can build the future and what God is calling us to right now is an invitation for you not just to be a witness, but to be a participant. To not just stand on the sidelines and applaud and say, great job, but to say, this is my calling, this is my house, and this must be my responsibility. To participate at some level. We've always believed this here at Vive Church, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. We understand that people are in different phases and stages of life financially, but yet we can all participate at some level of sacrifice to a level where it costs us something to say, God, I'm in. And I'm asking you to think right now, how can you participate? I'm gonna ask you to pray because in a moment, I'm gonna put up a QR code. In years past on Vision Sunday, we've given you a card to write down your commitment to put in a bucket and later we've calculated it. Today, we thought we would do a live Sunday tally where we would allow you to do it electronically And we can together today, on the day that we cast the vision, know how we're going to have an impact. To see in what way we're going to do all the things that God's asked us to do and beyond. I'm believing for overflow. I'm believing that the church mobilized is going to change the world. So I'm going to give you 15 seconds to pray. If you're with your spouse, pray right now. I want you to ask, how do you think God you would like us to partner. For some people, you could give a million dollars. That would be a stretch. For some of you, half a million, 100,000, 50,000, 20,000, 10,000, different increments that you know would be a stretch. And this isn't just looking at what's in your account. This is a 12-month pledge. When Kira and I give, we never have the amount. We're always believing that God is going to provide miraculously. That's why we want to stretch. We don't want to give what we've got. We want to go beyond what we've got because we want God to move. And we want God to provide. And every time He provides, that's our testimony. If you're giving for the first time today, I would excuse you for being cautious because you haven't seen God come through. But for those who have given before, you have a testimony of God's faithfulness. There's no reason for you to doubt if you've seen God move before. 
Now it's on you to stretch to new levels to see God move in greater ways than you've ever dared. How are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? As the vision has been set before you, as it's been made clear, now you are being tasked. We're being tasked with the responsibility to build the house. I tell this to people all the time, it's only money. It's only money. See, when money has your focus, it's not only money, it's everything. It's security, it's well-being, it's status. But when you realise that God gives you money to build something and to do something with, you realise it's only money. And that my God who is faithful will bring more money and more where that came from. So why would I not use it to build the thing that He provided me to build with? It's only money. When it's only money, it's got the power to make an impact. I want to do something live right now. If you could put up the QR codes. You can scan that right now and that's going to take you to a form. On that form, you're going to feel like your name. We're doing this across the globe right now. Every location. You can fill in that form and you can put your name in and what you're committing to as a pledge. Now, by all means, you could fulfill it today if you have the means to do that, but you can go through and just say how you intend to fill it just so that we know how we're going to move as a church. So would you do that right now? Because I want to be able to do a live calculation. I just feel that would be fun to know what faith level we have in our church. (laughs) To know where are we at with our obedience to God and what He's calling us to do. To not delay our obedience. We have always taught our girls delayed obedience is disobedience. (laughs) Because when we ask them to do something, we don't want them to do it in their time. As parents, we're saying, hey, would you do it right now? Would you prioritise what I'm asking of you? This is what I feel so strongly from God that we have an opportunity to say, God, I'm You already have my yes. I had someone tell me that before they came in this morning. I said, are you excited to hear the vision? They said, oh, God already has my yes. So whatever it is, I'm already committing. I'm like that. That's faith. You already have my yes. So as you, I'm just watching, making sure if you still need time, give me a wave, give me a wave. If you still need time, I want to make sure I count yours in. Okay, just take your time, take your time, but hurry. Just go with the bigger number, that whatever you were going to commit. Go with that in Jesus' name. The kids are getting restless. We've got to... Wave at me if you still need time. I'm not going to embarrass you. It's all right. Just keep praying. Keep, keep going. Why don't you pray, church, right now? Why don't we pray right, right where you are? Just begin to pray that God would multiply, that God would accelerate the vision of the house, that we would see the impact of this church, the vision that you've just heard, whether it's extending it to London or establishing facilities that are going to draw your family, your friends. I got to tell you, Vive Church is a good church to have kids at. The future of the church getting equipped, mobilised, not just the surroundings, but the exposure to what they're going to be able to be a part of. The worship that you get to carry, the voice and the sound of the house, the opportunities for you to lead and grow and minister in this house, the training, the leadership, all the things that what God has been building and is going to continue to build, you get to be a beneficiary of. So this is something that needs to be bathed in prayer. If you still need time, wave at me. Wave at me if you still need time. Yeah, you're fine. Keep going, keep going. I love a prayerful consideration. I love it when people ask the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has way more faith than I do. The Holy Spirit is needed to stretch me to the level that God sees on my life. I always struggle to see the capacity that God sees, but... When I partner with the Holy Spirit, I begin to believe that I can do this. I'd rather side with God than me any day of the week. Because when I side with me, I side with defeat, I side with doubt. But when I side with God, I side with victory. I side with the overcoming Spirit. And I side with the potential that He sees in me and who He calls me to be. It's a powerful position. If you still need time, wave at me. 
We'll wait, we'll wait. We... For the rest of you, while you're waiting, there's a card on your seat. And on that, that card is a space, a big space. Because we're about to have a ministry moment. And what we want to provide is space for you to write down what you're believing for, for you and your household. The miracles, you're in a faith atmosphere right now. You're in an atmosphere where people are sacrificing. That sacrifice gets the attention of heaven. If you want to know what gets the attention of heaven, it's always sacrifice and faith. We see it in Philippians when it talk about the sacrifice that's acceptable and pleasing to God as a sacrifice that costs us something. We see it in the Old Testament with David. David tried to sacrifice something to God that didn't cost him something and it wasn't accepted. He said, I will never give God something that didn't cost me something. He understand what gets the attention of heaven. And because you're in this atmosphere, I'm believing miracles can take place. That box is what you're believing for. And it can't just be something that you can do to give God credit. God doesn't need a hand in the miraculous. It's got to be something that's beyond you. I'm talking to parents who have trouble having kids. I, I would be putting children down, not just a child, I'd be putting children. If you've never believed you could have a home, just, tra- just I dare you to believe that God could provide for you. If you're starting a business or you're starting a adve- venture, I would encourage you to put down something that is beyond you, that in this place of faith, we could partner with you and our pastoral team can stand with you in prayer. But I think we're ready. And again, this is not the limit. If you need more time to commit to the vision, we're not closing it, but I'd I would love to get an update on where we are at as a global church. Would you like an update? Can we put this up on the screen? Can we see where we're at? 6.3 million dollars to achieve the vision. Come on, let's celebrate God. Come on. Holy Lord. Amazing, amazing. Stay standing, stay standing. We're going to pray. Pastoral team, come out the front. Come up the front, come along the front. Come on, if you put something impossible down on your card that you need someone to stand in faith for in this zone of miracle, and you just, you just need someone, a pastor, who's full of faith, who's full of anointing, to come into agreement with you, I just want you to come out the front. They're going to pray with you, and then you can go back to your seat. But this is the moment. Would you start moving right now? If you just want to get some prayer and partner with them, just start moving out of your seats. Come and find a pastor. They'll pray with you, and we're going to sing. We're going to worship God, but I don't want you to hold back. Come on, this is the moment where faith is extended.